Hello and welcome to Jamaica Magazine. I'm Theodore Henry. On the show today, we look at the 15 ecologically sensitive areas that have been identified as protected areas. More strides by the government to protect our natural resources. There is also a reminder of the March 31 deadline to file your statutory declarations and a few steps you can take to obtain a land title. The details right after this message. <laughs> The Wildlife Protection Act is a piece of legislation here in Jamaica, it was enacted in 1945, that tries to look at our animals or wildlife the, you know, on the island of Jamaica and try to ensure that they are conserved to some degree and not overexploited. So they are also, as an island, we, we have a lot of unique species. And if we lose those species on the island, it's gone to the entire world. So that is also one of the reasons why we have this piece of legislation to ensure that Jamaica can maintain its wildlife and um, preserve, preserve the wildlife for future generations. In the Jamaican context, being an island, being very small, some persons have never left the island before and so Jamaica seems big, but Jamaica is really very small. We have a lot to lose. We have a lot of resources and we have a lot to lose. So we're encouraging the public not to over harvest, not to go against the Wildlife Protection Act and take animals that are considered protected species. And if animals are in a vulnerable situation where you think they need assistance, we encourage persons to first contact NEPA at 754-7540 and ask for assistance, especially if those animals have the potential of doing harm or, or being dangerous. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your GIS News for Thursday, March 23, 2023. Residents of Macca Hill and adjoining communities in Southeast St. Mary are now receiving more reliable water supply. This follows the installation of the Macca Hill Pipeline Replacement Project. The $31 million investment was officially commissioned into service recently by Minister with Responsibility for Water, Senator Matthew Samuda. The Macca Hill community has been plagued with intermittent supply since 2005. Due to the growth in population in Highgate as well as the limited water supply, that has led to the particular challenges. Minister Samuda points out that over the last three fiscal years, government has increased access to potable water for thousands of Jamaicans, particularly in rural parishes. This has been made possible through the Tank and Pump Rehabilitation for Operational Efficiency Improvement Program. Our rural communities have been without water for far too long, and we are determined to ensure that water systems are commissioned right across the length and breadth of this country. Meanwhile, pipeline expansion work is scheduled to begin next month on areas of the Greater Mandeville Water Supply Improvement Project. This is expected to supply flow to residents of the Pepper community situated on the border of Manchester and St. Elizabeth along with adjoining areas. We've done an assessment of this area and others which are very close by and what exists is simply not suitable to provide the water for the community, which obviously you know because when you turn on your pipes you don't get reliable water supply and that's not something that sits well with me and I've given a commitment to MP slowly that first of all the work for this community which will involve a three kilometer extension of the one kilometer pipe will commence in April. Minister Matthew Samuda gave the update to residents during a tour of the community earlier this month. So you have my word that the pipe will extend two kilometers longer than it currently runs so 200 percent increase with a new pipe that will provide reliable water flows from the existing well that will significantly improve the flows to the community of Pepper. He says work will also commence shortly to repair and restore a 50,000 gallon tank that has been decommissioned for some time. This will significantly improve supply flows and create resilience. Patient care at the University Hospital of the West Indies, UHWI, is expected to be boosted by the acquisition of 18 new Philips Intel View monitors, valued at over $20 million. The patient monitors were donated by the Culture, Health, Arts, Sports and Education Chase Fund and the Masonic Homes Limited. They were handed over by Minister of Health and Wellness, Dr. Christopher Tufton, on Tuesday. We appreciate the, 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 the gift that has been delivered here to UHWI. 
It will make the institution a lot better, more efficient in terms of patient care. The monitors which display color-coded vital signs will assist doctors and nurses in ECG and respiratory monitoring as well as the monitoring of patients' blood pressure and oxygen levels. We already have 23 in our ICU A and ICU B which is connected to our central monitoring system and we are almost doubling the capacity in terms of monitoring beds today. With three confirmed cases of viral conjunctivitis or pink eye in Westmoreland, the parish's health department is urging residents to take precautions to prevent an outbreak. Surveillance data shows that the three cases were confirmed in the Negril Health District and were detected in children ages 2, 3 and 5. Health Promotion and Education Officer for the parish, Gerald Miller, tells JIS News that while there is currently no outbreak, he's advising the public to take steps to lower their risk of becoming infected with pink eye. These measures include washing hands regularly, limiting handshakes, and wearing eye protection when exposed to wind, dust, heat, or sun to avoid irritation. Persons are also being urged to avoid touching the eyes unnecessarily or sharing eye makeup, eye medicines, and contact lenses, containers, and solutions. Mr. Miller says the health department has notified its stakeholders and has been conducting sensitization activities to boost awareness. Pink eye is contagious. We are using this medium now to engage our stakeholders and to alert our stakeholders. We will have sent information to of our um, the development officers who work with the Early Child Commission. And we also inform the education officer for Westmoreland. He's urging parents to visit the nearest health center if their children are experiencing symptoms of the virus. Signs of pink eye include redness and watery eyes, itchy and or burning eyes, grainy feeling in the eyes, and hypersensitivity to light. Most people will recover from the virus within 7 to 10 days without medical treatment. Jamaica is exploring the use of mined out lands for the cultivation of black castor beans to tap into the huge global market. Minister of State in the Ministry of Transport and Mining, J.C. Hutchinson, outlined the initiative at a recent Castor Industry Forum organized by the Jamaica Bauxite Institute, JBI. So, while this gives us a unique product with multiple benefits, it also allows us to rehabilitate the land. I've been in dialogue with several stakeholders who have already invested in the cast of bean. We have dedicated small and large plots of land to plant and I have seen them growing and they have been doing extremely well on many of these soils. Minister Hutchinson says Jamaica will need to have a structured program to ensure there is a consistent supply of the beans. Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries, Pernell Charles Jr., adds that there is much to be done to fully capitalize on the global castor oil market, which is valued at 75 to 100 million U.S. dollars. Acknowledging Jamaica black castor oil as liquid gold is a good start. It's a good start. But there's a lot of work we have to do to make sure that we organize ourselves to ensure that we train and that we upskill so we can maximize the potential of this liquid gold. And finally, the Jamaica Urban Transit Company and the Road Safety Unit of the Ministry of Transport and Mining is appealing to students to end the alarming trend of running alongside JUTC buses in the downtown Kingston Layby. According to a statement from the Transport Ministry, in recent weeks, there have been reported incidents of students from schools in downtown Kingston running alongside buses in the bus park in an attempt to board and secure seating. The ministry says the practice has attracted growing concern as it poses a serious risk to the students as well as the safety of other passengers and road users. Corporate communications manager at the JUTC, Cecil Toms, says similar behavior was witnessed in the latter part of December 2022 and unfortunately seems to continue even now. An urgent appeal is being made to school officials and parents to speak with their children about the dangers of running after and alongside buses and the general importance of practicing road safety while commuting to and from school. They are also being reminded to encourage students to stand on the curb and wait for the buses to come to a complete stop before approaching them. Persons should approach the bus from the front and wait for the driver to open the door and are not to push or shove other passengers. 
Director of the Road Safety Unit, Deidre Hudson Sinclair, says the Ministry of Education and schools in the area have been engaged to provide road safety intervention, which will be done over the coming weeks. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Yes, walk right over there and drop it in the bin. Reuse that wastewater from your kitchen for the garden. Get your hands dirty and plant a tree. Farmers, hold off on the pesticides, especially near our rivers. Do your part to protect our watersheds so we can preserve the source of our drinking water. Every act to protect our watersheds counts. Start now. 15 ecologically sensitive areas across the island have been identified for enhanced protection. This means restrictions will be placed on the type of activities that may be permitted in these geographical areas. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says this is to preserve their hydrological or ecological functions and services. He explains it further. The following is an excerpt from the 2023-2024 budget presentation by Prime Minister the Most Honorable Andrew Holness. 15 ecologically sensitive areas across the island have been identified for enhanced protection. These geographical areas will have restrictions on the types of activities that may be permitted in order to preserve their hydrological or ecological functions and services. Low impact development, such as ecotourism, may be permitted in these areas, but the restrictive conditions and approval from the relevant regulatory authorities must be received. Madam Speaker, not only have we completed the policy work, but we have also moved swiftly to implementation. The first is Industry Cove in Hanover, Bogue St. James, Montpelier St. James, Winds Morass and Oyster Bay, Trelawney, Bengal in St. Anne, Fern Gully in St. Anne, Holland Bay St. Thomas, Long Mountain, St. Andrew, Palisados, that is the Port Royal Protected Area Conservation Zones, Shooters Hill, St. Catherine, Helsha Hills and Goat Islands, St. Catherine, Canoe Valley, Manchester and Clarendon, Great Bay, and that's in St. Elizabeth, and the Negril Great Morass in Hanover and Westmoreland. At the core of these and other initiatives is the call for 30% of our land and marine areas to be protected. And Madam Speaker, I am pleased to report that we will exceed that target. In this financial year, we declared the Black River protected area and the natural, under the Natural Resources uh, Conservation Authority Act. Uh, Madam Speaker, you would recall that that time, I made a further commitment to make the Pedro Keys and surrounding waters a protected area. This has now been completed. And I have the act that does that here. Madam Speaker, it is clear that the government is actively pursuing greater legislative and practical protection for our environment. We have, however, also been pursuing significant restoration efforts. I am pleased today to report that through the efforts of the Forestry Department and many other national stakeholders, we have passed the mark of 2.5 million trees planted nationally. Madam Speaker, I've directed the Forestry Department to coordinate and work with the National Works Agency to ensure that along all new road projects, trees will be planted to soften the impact of the infrastructure as well as to improve the aesthetics of the area, increase biodiversity, and contribute to the reduction of the heat island effect, particularly within urban spaces. Madam Speaker, the technology exists, the equipment exists, and this is done quite often. Not all the trees will survive. But you know what, Madam Speaker? Because we respect our environment, and we respect that the tree has a life, 
that we who are masters of the environment will act in a way that is respectful and protective. Bridging, the road signs make the traffic environment safe. The green light means go. Red means stop. Amber also means stop. Yeah man, it don't mean you must speed up. And get this, even if the light's on green, when the traffic is thick, don't bother move off and block the intersection. And please, don't stop on a pedestrian crossing. Look out for children, the disabled and the elderly. Follow the signs so they all can arrive alive. Be a good road user. Obey the road signs and look out for each other. Let's take you now through the process of obtaining a land title. If you are a landowner who does not have a registered title, you can apply for one now. A registered title is a document that indicates you own the land. And if you don't have one, another person can lay claim to your land. The process of registering for land titles begins here. Here are the initial steps you need to take. Step 1. Obtain and sign an application form as stipulated by the Registration of Titles Act. Step 2 is to obtain a statutory declaration, which is merely a letter from a local resident attesting to the applicant's ownership of the land. Step 3 is similar to Step 2 in that you must obtain a supporting statutory statement from two people who have known the property for at least 30 years in order to demonstrate ownership rights through possession. This is necessary if the petitioner lacks 40 years worth of documentary evidence of ownership. The fourth step requires you to obtain a current certificate of payment for property taxes. You will also need a survey checked diagram if the land is being registered by plan. After that, present any other document you may have proving ownership, such as a receipt, transfer, or probate form. Finally, you must pay an entry fee, which is equal to 1% of the property's value. You must pay this cost when you provide your paperwork to the assessor at the title office. You will receive an official receipt with the name of the applicant, the document number, and the receipt number printed on it. Your application number is printed on the receipt and must be used when you are contacted about the application. Once your application has been submitted successfully, you must save your receipt. Processing takes anywhere from six months to a year. If a rejection notification is sent out during that time, the processing period will restart if you want to reapply. Pay your property taxes, have your land surveyed, and remember, land titles can be used as a resource to safeguard your future and the future of your children. To learn more about how to obtain a land title today, visit the National Land Agency's website at www.nla.gov.jm. The powers that are given to us under the um, state of public emergency are on top of all of the other law enforcement things we do. So Operation Relentless continues in certain spaces where violence is significant. We add in emergency powers on top of that. The combination of all of that gives us the results we need. The state of emergency allows us to impact the people who intelligence says are doing violence. As we approach the end of March, the Integrity Commission is reminding public sector workers who fall within specific categories to file their statutory declarations.
If between January 1 and December 31, you are a parliamentarian or public official in receipt of total emoluments of $3.5 million or above, or you are appointed or perform the functions of a position listed in the Jamaica Gazette December 14, 2022, regarding the Integrity Commission Act, you are required to file a statutory declaration of assets, liabilities and income as at December 31. What to file? You are required to declare all balances and interest in all assets, liabilities and income received by you, your spouse and children below the age of 18, whether living in Jamaica or abroad. It should be noted that a person who knowingly makes a false statement in a statutory declaration may be liable to a fine not exceeding $2 million or to a term of imprisonment not exceeding two years. The Integrity Commission has implemented its zero tolerance policy. All declarants are to submit all outstanding statutory declarations. Failure to submit a statutory declaration may attract a fine of not exceeding $500,000 or to a term of imprisonment not exceeding six months. The Integrity Commission has decentralized the collection of statutory declarations. Submit your statutory declarations for the previous calendar year securely within your organization on or before March 31 of the following year. Here's how. Firstly, complete your statutory declaration. Ensure you have entered the correct as at date, for example, December 31, 2022. NA or C attached is never an appropriate response. Use none and list all required balances. Copy or print additional pages where necessary. Ensure all the sections are signed. A justice of the peace is required to validate your signature by signing, entering the date, location, and affixing their embossed seal. Attach the relevant supporting documents. ATM printouts are not accepted. You then proceed to your in-house collection point. Collect a statutory declaration envelope and security seal. Place the required information on the statutory declaration envelope, seal the envelope, and affix the security seal. Deposit the secure envelope in the Integrity Commission branded collection container or with your designated officer on or before March 31. Finally, enter your name and date of submission on the Integrity Commission log sheet. The designated officer should deposit the white copy of the log sheet in the collection container on April 1, retain the yellow copy for the files, and facilitate the submission of the collection container to the Integrity Commission. The Integrity Commission will register your statutory declaration and send you a receipt by email on or before May 13. After submission, the statutory declaration is examined for due completion and accuracy, where the Integrity Commission is satisfied that the statutory declaration has been duly completed, certification is done, and an advisory issued to the declarant. Submit your statutory declaration completely and accurately and get on the path to certification. For more information, visit our office on the fourth floor of the Sajakor Sigma building at 63 to 67 Knotswood Boulevard, Kingston 5, or give us a call at 876-968-6227 or 876-960-0470. Hey there! So I recently came across a post from the World Health Organization and I'm just here assuming that like me, you're also looking for ways to take care of yourself, right? Well, let's hope so. The post read, one in two young people is at risk of hearing loss. So here goes. This is what I learned about safe listening habits. How do you even know when noise is damaging your hearing? There are easy tells and most likely you've experienced one if not all. You have to raise your voice to talk to other people. You cannot hear what people nearby are saying. It hurts your ears. You have room Did you hear that? Okay, back to what I was saying. If you have ringing in your ears or muffled hearing afterwards, 
the noise is quite possibly loud enough to damage your hearing. So, what can you do? Keep the volume down. Do not listen to music at more than 60% of the maximum volume. Do not use earphones or headphones for more than an hour at a time. Take a break for at least 5 minutes every hour. Use earplugs in noisy places. Also, if you're in a noisy environment, try to take a break every 15 minutes. Give your hearing about 18 hours to recover after exposure to lots of loud noise. Limit time spent on loud activities. Monitor sound levels using mobile apps. And finally, check your hearing regularly. We oftentimes drown our listening habits in the noise and the vibe, but as you just learned, it takes very little to take care of our hearing health. And that's it. Easy, simple and done. Happy hearing. Do you own land and need a title? Well, the National Land Agency, NLA, can help. Through the systematic land registration process, the NLA will assist residents to get titles in declared project areas across Jamaica. Systematic land registration is the methodical and orderly registration of parcels of land in a designated area known as systematic adjudication area. For further information on the systematic land registration process, including declared systematic adjudication areas, who can apply and the benefits, visit the National Land Agency's website at www.nla.gov.jm or email asknla at nla.gov.jm. The National Land Agency, one agency, one goal. Sometimes the water is under the soil. How are we going to get the water from under the soil up into the atmosphere? How are we going to do that? Huh? You are? Transpiration. How you get it out of the soil? Because some water is inside the soil. You know? Transpiration. Evapor what? Transpiration. Transpiration. Evapor transpi Where you learn them big words then? <laughs> but you know how you get the evapor transpiration? This. The, tree. the trees are what gets the water out of the soil and into the atmosphere. So the roots will go down and find the water and then the water will come up through the root, up into the stem, come into the, 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 the what these are, the leaves and then it will come out through the leaves through evapotranspiration. Right, so the water gets back into the atmosphere so that we can get the clouds. So that's why the trees are so important to weather and climate. There's a quote from the character Jiminy Cricket in the animated movie Pinocchio which says, If your heart is in your dream, no request is too extreme. My interpretation, our heart has a space to nurture and activate the craziest and the biggest of dreams. So don't limit yourself or the outcome you want. Go ahead and aim high. This is all the time we have for you today, but be sure to join us again tomorrow when we bring you another informative program. In the meantime, stay connected via our website, jis.gov.jm. And while you're online, send your feedback to Jamaica Magazine at jis.gov.jm or via tweet at JIS News. You may also find us on all the major social media platforms and through our mobile app that's both Android and iOS compatible. On behalf of the production crew, I'm Theodore Henry. Take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.